My name is Bob Scheibel, and I am the chair of an organization called Maine Voices for Palestinian Rights. Our aim is to work toward a just peace in Israel-Palestine, and our way of doing that, or helping with that, is to try to educate the public about what is really happening there, uh, because we feel that far too often people don't get the full story. At least they do not get the Palestinian perspective. We are having uh, this week an event on the USM campus that uh, brings a number of Palestinians to campus as well as the Israeli-American author Miko Pellid, uh, the author of The General Son, Journey of an Israeli in Palestine. So, sitting with me today are two members of that group who have come over, and to my far right is Jiriz Atrash. Sitting right next to me is Jane Sami Hillel. Okay, and we are very happy to have them, and so I will begin by just asking them to brief briefly identify yourself and just say, why are you here? What, what do you do? Uh, my name is Jirius Atrash. We are here with a message of peace. We are here for a message to tell the American people through the conference, Tree of Life, that justice should be done to the Palestinian. We, the Palestinians should have justice, and by, doing, by having justice means we should establish our country, Palestine, over the land which was occupied by Israel in 1967 war, in the Six-Day War, with East, Jeb with East uh, Jerusalem as the capital of the state of Palestine. And we're going to be living side to the side with, uh, side to the side with Israel in peace and harmony. Okay, and we'll get into that a little bit more. But I think another thing you've done, you helped organize a group of young people yeah. into this Bridges of Hope performers. Is yeah. that right? And they're with us uh, eight, for eight this program. Years, eight, eight, eight years ago, we formed a group called Bridges of Hope, which the main goal is to bring young Palestinians from Palestine, from different towns of the West Bank and Gaza Strip, to the United States and they can live two weeks to three weeks with the American people and tell them about their daily life in, in Palestine, their daily life under an Israeli occupation. And at uh, the same time, they will serve as ambassador after those three weeks to the American families or the American people oh, they great. met to go to, when they go to the West Bank, back to their hometown, they will tell that American people are supporting uh, the freedom for uh, the Palestinians. And Jane, my understanding is that you work for the um, Institute for Applied Research in Jerusalem. Would you say a little bit about what your role is there and what do you do? Hi, I'm Jane Hlal and I'm an environmentalist uh, working in the field of environment and water uh, since uh, 2004 and I'm working uh, on the uh, Applied Research Institute at a, as a head of the Water and Environment Research Department. Okay, now let's talk just a little bit about water because I know that's an issue. Um, what can you tell us about the amount of water that is available to Palestinians? You know, first of all, I want to uh, say that uh, the water uh, issue is one of the most important factors in the Palestinian-Israeli uh, conflict. And the uh, Israelis, since they occupied uh, the West Bank and Gaza, they also control the water resources in the occupied Palestinian territory. And uh, right now, uh, we, as a Palestinian, we don't have access to the surface water, which is the Jordan uh, River. And also, uh, the, they uh, control and utilize the Israeli around 89% of the water resources in the West Bank, leaving yes, the Palestinian with only 11% of the uh, water inside the West Bank. And is this why 
when I've been over there, I've seen these, they look like big black water tanks or something on top of everybody's home. Is that just to catch rainwater? Yes, and also it's like uh, storage uh, uh, tanks in order to uh, reser reserve it for the days that we don't have uh, water, and sometimes it's uh, for one month. So it's a, a type of strategy that the Palestinians use to cope with the uh, water shortage, especially in the summertime. Okay. Now, as both of you no doubt know, there are what are known as peace talks going on right now. Um, Jiris, what, what do you think, are you hopeful for these peace talks? What do you think will come out of it? What would have to come out of it, you think, for you as a Palestinian to be satisfied, to feel that we, we now have a just agreement? What would it be? Well, uh, the peace talk going now since 1993, since we signed to Oslo, and it has been very failing peace talk. Mm -hmm. Uh, because of the stubbornness of the state of Israel, of the government of the state of Israel. Uh, and stubborn, what, stubborn in what way? They're stubborn, they don't want to give up anything. They don't want to give up the settlements, for example, the settlements which are built uh, on Palestinian land. They don't want to do that. They don't want to give us uh, control over, over, uh, over our, our uh, natural resources. Uh, they don't want to give us the freedom of movement even, that's something, they don't want to give us the water uh, we need and uh, because they, they, they use everything for themselves, you okay. know, like uh, four to one, they use four percent, uh, four times, as, times much. as much as one to the Palestinians. Mm. And uh, uh, the peace talk is right now failing too because they are not agreeing at agreeing at many issues. Remember, the issues are the settlements, for example, East Jerusalem. The Israeli believe that Jerusalem is one and should be the capital of the state of Israel. But East Jerusalem was captured by the Israelis in 1967 war. Right now, the peace process is failing exactly like the other ones. Uh, because Israelis are not giving up land or settlements. There are so many issues not solved, and Israel does not want even to talk about it, is the uh, East Jerusalem as the future capital of the state of Palestine. Okay. Uh, they think it's, uh, Jerusalem is the capital of Israel and should be united. And they don't want to remove the settlements which are built on Palestinians' land and they don't want uh, to give us any control over our water. And remember other thing that Israel, even after, after 1993 with the Oslo Agreement, Israel controls over 70% of the land, mm -hmm. of the Palestinian land. And that's very important for Israel because that land has, mostly, has most of the water under it, cultural land has uh, uh, the agricultural land which Israel needs. And it's not populated as and the And the Palestinians need. Yeah, and the Palestinians <laughs> to establish their, their state, they need that land. Okay. And <clears throat> Jane, let me ask you something. You grew up under the occupation, right? Yes. And Jirius has mentioned restricted movement. Talk a little bit about that. What's, what's it been like to grow up under the occupation? Have you felt your movement restricted or have you, do you have relatives or friends in the West Bank who can't come visit you at your place of work in Jerusalem? How does this all work? Really, it's very hard to grow up under occupation and because you feel that you are in a big jail and you cannot move, you cannot uh, go to visit your uh, relative, your friends, even uh, during our work, because sometimes we should go to the field, and because of the checkpoints that they are uh, distributed everywhere, not just the checkpoints, we have several uh, checkpoints, but with different uh, names. So really, it's make uh, our life very uh, hard to 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 go on, to go on to go on you know, in a daily uh, life. So sometimes if I want to go uh, on a meeting in Ramallah, which is only uh, maybe uh, 15 minutes from my uh, hometown, Bethlehem, 
but it take me like two hours if everything is normal because wow. we have we should take another road which uh, called Wadinar and it, it's really very bad uh, road and because also there is a checkpoint and if the soldier in that day he's in a bad mood this means maybe I will stay four hours in this checkpoint. Really, really it's very hard to live in such situation. Well, you know, I um, have a Jewish friend who lives in Brooklyn, New York. And she was on a trip that my wife and I took to Israel-Palestine uh, last year. She, we learned there, I believe I'm remembering this correctly, that there were people who say lived in Ramallah who said they lived just a very short distance from Jerusalem, and yet they had not been able to go to Jerusalem in a dozen years. And Jerusalem is sort of the cultural, economic capital, heart center of the West Bank, isn't it? As a Palestinian, we are forbidden to go to Jerusalem. So, yes, I didn't go to Jerusalem for a long time because I'm Palestinian ah. and I cannot go there. And also they now built a huge checkpoint. It's like a border. It's not a checkpoint that uh, prevent us from going to, the, to Jerusalem. And don't forget the wall, the segregation wall that they uh, start to build it since uh, 2002. Huh. Well, I mentioned this woman from Brooklyn because when she was told this, she said, my gosh, that would be like I'm living in Brooklyn and I want to go into Manhattan, but I've been unable to go into Manhattan for a dozen years. I, I live uh, yani, approximately 10 minutes from Jerusalem, and if I open my window room, I can see Jerusalem from my window, but I cannot go but there cannot physically. Go. Wow. Question for you both. Suppose some kind of agreement came, and it was an agreement that set up two states. I hear sometimes Jewish friends or colleagues, acquaintances of mine, who say, we don't think we can live with them. They don't want peace. They don't want peace. They just want terrorism and war. Do you think that if we had an agreement, could the Palestinian people live in peace with the, uh, with the state of Israel? If we establish our state of Palestine on the, on the occupied territory, I mean the West Bank, the West Bank and Gaza Strip, and becomes a state, uh, become a state with its controlling everything, right. and yes, we can live in peace with them, okay. with the Israelis. That's okay. not an issue anymore. We can live in peace with Israel because we depend so much on each other. Mm. You know, uh, agricultural products are moving from Israel to the West Bank, labor from the West Bank to Israel. We have a lot of work together, right. and we cannot separate the both people from each other, but each of us will have his own state, his own passport, okay. his own uh, identity card, his own uh, home with the title, uh, the... Uh, deed saying Palestine, the state of Palestine, that's when we start building the trust between us and the Israelis, and we could live forever together. Okay. Yeah. Do you agree with that, Jane? Yes, because in that, when we establish our uh, state, in that time we will be equal to the Israelis. But right now we are not equal. Okay. They are our, who occupied our land, our, our, our freedom. So if I have my state, then I will be equal to any Israeli, so I think I can live with them. Okay. Now, let me, let me turn to the subject of religion. Um, are you two, you're, you're Arabs, you are Palestinians, are, what's your religion? Uh, I'm a Christian. And I'm a Christian. Christian. We are Arab, Palestinians, Christians. Okay. Yeah. I asked and they you are that. Arab, Palestinians, Muslims. Okay. I asked you that question because I just wanted to yeah. hear that from you because I think I was surprised when I, I shouldn't be it was an ignorant position yeah. but we had a we had a young woman from Brandeis University a Jewish woman no I mean a Palestinian woman who was a friend of our daughters who was going to Brandeis and she came to our house one weekend and I asked her about her religion she said she was Christian to show you how stupid and ignorant I was I said to her oh did uh, did missionaries come over and she says Bob Christianity began yeah. here they began in our home. The, we're first, the first Christians, Christians. were, we are were the Palestinians Christians. in a way. So, yeah. But I think uh, if I could be that ignorant, which I was just a few years ago, 
we can imagine how many other people really do not know that there are real the community of Christians. Do the Christians and the Muslims in the West Bank, how do you get along? We, we, uh, we coexist with them and with us. Remember, they are both Muslims and Christians are Palestinians. Okay, yes. You know, they are not different yes. race. No, we are both Palestinians, except my religion is Christian and their religion is a Muslim, it has nothing. We both demand the same thing, a Palestinian state. Okay. You know, you know okay. maybe we differ, one will go to the mosque, the other will go to the church, but we are Palestinians. Okay, yeah. so, so I remember um, hearing the former uh, ambassador, Israel's ambassador to the United States, his name was oh, Michael Oren, and you might, yeah, I, I got a lot of press over here, yeah. in which he talked about how, how well Israel treated its, its Christians and that the um, Christians were not treated well by the Muslims in the West Bank and that Christians are actually f treated better by the Jews inside Israel. Do you, what do no, you think? No, that, was he correct? That's really uh, wrong. That's completely wrong because Israel will treat me not as a Christian or as a Muslim. They treat me as a Palestinian who are less than them. Okay, that's so being a Palestinian treat. trumps uh, Yeah, be, be, being else? a Palestinian doesn't, uh, that's what they look at you. You are a Palestinian. If you're a Christian, you still can go to jail. If you are a Muslim, you still can go to jail. If you are a Palestinian a Christian, you cannot enter Jerusalem. Okay. It's now, the same. Let me it's ask you same. this. Are you worried that as things move forward, that there are going to be fewer and fewer Christians living in Bethlehem and in Jerusalem? Are, are things difficult that it, it's causing people to leave, Christians to leave? We're less than 1% out of 25%. The, the, we are okay. now less than 1% uh, because of the war, because of the Israeli occupation. And the job opportunities uh, okay. are not there, available for young people, for that they seek other employment outside Palestine, okay. but they still they still are attached. But they are attached to their homeland. They go and yeah. come back. They go and come back. I hear that the wall, you know, the big yeah. tall wall. Sometimes well, a wall, some places a fence. That we we read and hear. In fact, I heard a reporter, a correspondent for the Jerusalem Post, just uh, last week, speaking here, say that that wall was built in order to protect the Israelis from uh, Palestinian violence and that it was working. Um, how do you, is this wall protecting them? What, where is this wall and what's, what's your experience of it? Jane, we'll start with you. Yeah, yeah I think the wall is just, uh, was built in order to uh, capturing more land. Capturing more land. Palestinian yeah. land and to uh, add the settlements to, 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 uh, to take the land of the settlements also to the Israeli uh, side to, uh, to control more uh, the, of the natural resources and of course the water resources and to also it will take around 13% 30, 30, uh, of the uh, total area of the West Bank. Okay. And it will, uh, I will give you some numbers, I isolate 29 uh, wells, water wells and 32 uh, springs. That they took yes, on, the, the, on the other side. Be, be okay. The and the okay. agriculture land, too. Mostly, you know, I mean, most of the agriculture now is, uh, is going to be the other side of the wall, yeah. not with us, okay. even if it's in our land. Yeah, I hear you. Now, I heard a uh, Palestinian say one time, I wonder your reaction to this. He said, if that wall were actually being built along the green line, which was called the the, the armistice line yeah. at the end of the war in 1949, he said if they built it along there, I'd go out there and help them build it, but not when it's coming into, my, into our land. Do you? Yeah, they should build it on their own land, not on ours. Okay. Not on the Palestinian lands. If they want to build a wall to protect themselves, they can build it on the border, uh, on the border with Israel. Okay, now let, yeah. me, let me put you on the spot, okay? Suicide bombers. When the suicide bombers began in huge numbers back around 2000, 2002, 2003, 2004, that period right in there, 
it, uh, I think, created a lot of terror in the hearts of, of Israelis. Um, how do you explain that there were suicide bombers? What's your, what's your reaction to that? Suicide bombing are rejected by the majority of the Palestinians. I think it's shameful the suicide bombing people or person who did it killed innocent mm. Israelis. Right. You know, we are totally, you can ask anybody in the West Bank, against it. Right. Yeah. If the Palestinians supported it, you'll see more suicide bombing. But they said, no, we're not for it. Uh, you know, we are against it, and we are not for it, and don't do it. Mm -hmm. We are people who are... Uh, killing does not exist in our dictionaries. We don't like to see people, uh, civilian or young people, being killed for, for nothing. Okay. Jane, does that... I think, yeah, the, the same. You know, we are not uh, looking for someone to, that kill uh, innocent people and children. But in the same time, we also want that the Israeli soldier not come to our house and killing our children right. and our people. So we want also this to stop from their side, not just from our side. If there is no occupation, we will not do this. We don't have to fight anybody if, the, if there's no occupation. If we're in the occupation, we don't. And I, I, we are not looking for a state with a military state, you know, military mm -hmm. tanks. We're not. We're looking for a state which can support people economically. We can find jobs. People can work. People live in dignity.